Yeah, I want to talk about graphene. I want to talk about this this wonder technology that is going to take over, literally take over the world. Not so much with respect just the sanitary napkins, but I'm going to speak about graphene in general. But what I what I always say is when that woman, that young lady, going to the store to get a sanitary napkin, they want something that's comfortable and something that's going to work. That's why they're going to the store. They're not going to the store for graphene. They're not going to the store for fancy packaging. They're going to the store to get a sanitary napkin that works, okay, and one that makes them feel comfortable. So that's the bottom line. Okay. Our napkin does that. They, they've already talked about it. They've done a demonstration. The napkin is the best napkin on the market. Just without anything else, the napkin itself. And so as a gynecologist, the number one cause the number one, and the people may not, well, women can relate to this. The number one cause why a woman goes to the gynecologist is because of either vaginal or vulva irritation. Okay, she does not like feeling uncomfortable. Okay, that just affects her entire day, it affects her entire week, it affects her psyche, it affects her relationship, it affects her job performance. She doesn't like being uncomfortable. And she may have tried things that she felt may have worked, and when those things don't work, then she's going to the gynecologist to get a cream, get a pill, get a cream, get a pill, or she goes to the gynecologist, the gynecologist, the gynecologist, because she still has those problems and thinks that maybe if I go to another doctor, he may be able to solve it because this other doctor could. Because of that, you have to say to yourself, well, what could be causing these chronic irritations. Okay, I mean, we kind of know sometimes we may have put on a feminine spray or something, or we may have worn something a little too tight, or we may have taken antibiotics for like a bladder infection, okay, and after you take the antibiotics, what happens, you get a yeast infection, and when you get that yeast infection, instead of having that treated that way, a lot of us will think, oh, maybe it'll just kind of go away on its own, and as you know, it just gets worse, okay, and you become more irritated, and all those other things I said two minutes ago are magnified, okay? So this is what we see, okay, as gynecologists, okay? And my thing is, all right, I'm not saying that the pad is responsible for all those things, but let's just think about it for a second. Let's think about it for a second. When you have what's called contact dermatitis or allergic reaction, and you might think it's from soap powder or something you touch. So when you get some sort of skin reaction, okay, or irritation, you have no problem saying it may be from something that you touched or it was on you. But nobody thinks that maybe some of these vulvitises or vaginitis could have been brought on by the sanitary act. Okay, because you don't think that. Yeah. You're thinking that, that this society would not allow a product to be in a store, okay, that women are wearing every single month that could be causing chronic irritation and inflammation, so you automatically think it's something else. That's why you go to the gynecologist, okay, and hoping that they will find what is this thing that's causing these problems. And I'm telling you, if you have something that's not natural up against something that is natural, okay, you are looking for a problem, okay? When you have, now I'm gonna get a little graphic, but with women, I can get graphic, because this is what I've been doing for 40 years. This is how I talk to my patients, okay? And they know that, okay? When you have that cycle, okay, when that blood, I'm not gonna say menstrual, when that blood comes out, it has bacteria in it. Okay, because there's bacteria in your vagina. It is supposed to be there. But it's at a level that doesn't cause a problem. It's at a level to keep your acid, levels, your pH of your vagina, at a certain amount, such that when the sperm is in there, okay, the sperm will not die so that it can, so it can ascend through the cervix, into the uterus, out through the fallopian tubes, and allow you to conceive. Okay, if the vagina's pH was off, when the sperm entered, the sperm would die. Okay, so that bacteria is there for a reason. It's not bad, it's there. However, increase or excessive amounts of anything, except money, anything is bad. Okay? okay, so here you have this bacteria, okay, that now has come out and is sitting on the pad. And where's that pad? 
right up against the lips, the bulk. It's sitting there, and the bacteria is growing. If you remember from when you were in, sometimes people did this in middle school or elementary school, where the teachers told you, take a Q-tip, swab the inside of your mouth, you put it on this little plate, and they put it in an incubator, and the next day you went in there and you saw all this horrendous stuff on there. That's bacteria that's in your mouth, okay? It's in your mouth, it's supposed to be there. But those plates were called blood agar plates. Blood, because the best culture medium for bacteria is blood, okay? So every time you have a cycle, what you're doing is you're creating an excess amount of bacteria. And that's why tampons are so bad, because what the tampon is doing is going against nature. Okay, that orifice, every hole in your body has a function, has a reason for being there. There is no reason why the vagina should be plugged Okay, it should not be plugged. Mm. That blood needs to come out mm. with that excess <clears throat> bacteria. Mm. When you have that tampon up there, you're leaving that excess bacteria in the vagina, okay, mm. allowing it to be absorbed through the walls of your vagina or, <coughs> in the worst, back up to your cervix, into your uterus, out through your fallopian tubes, and into your body. Mm -hmm. Okay, what makes a woman anatomically different than a man. We know basically, but I'm gonna tell you something that people don't think about. A man has no opening in his body that allows something to get inside of his, outside of his abdomen. We don't, think about it. Mouth, rectum, okay? Mouth, out to the penis, urinate. But a woman, you have the orifice that allows something to go up through that cervix into the uterus, out through the fallopian tubes, and land inside your abdomen. That right there tells you that there must be medical conditions that women may get that men won't even get, okay? Won't even get. I'm sure you've seen on TV about some of these ads about people who use talcum powder, you know, they could be, have been exposed to ovarian cancer. I'm not standing here saying that, okay, I'm not, but I'm gonna say to you, why it's possible, okay? Because that talcum powder, think what I just said, ascends into the vagina, up to the cervix, into the uterus, out to the fallopian tubes. And if you remember any of your biology pictures when they show the fallopian tubes, right under the fallopian tubes are the ovaries. Okay, so now you have something that comes out and lands right on the ovaries. Okay, so that's why they have this suspicion, I'll use the word suspicion, that the use of those talcum powders, okay, may have allowed that irritation on the ovary for those years that may have predisposed some of those women to ovarian cancer. The only reason I'm mentioning that is just to say in general how important it is to make sure that your vagina is healthy. Okay, because of the direct connection between your vagina and the inside of your abdomen, where your liver, where your kidneys, where your stomach, where your spleen are located. Okay, they're not there to be affected by anything. Men, it's not an issue. And nothing can get to our kidneys, nothing can get to our liver, our stomach. But a woman, yes, you have an opening into your abdomen. Okay, so that's why it is so important whether it's bacteria, whether it's chemicals, whether it's toxins, anything that can get up there has the potential of causing a problem. Okay, so that's why we are so anti, and I've always, way before he said that, I've always been anti-tampon, because to me it just didn't make any sense, okay, why somebody would use it. I mean, I understood how it got to that point, because the pads were bad pads. They were ineffective. That's the only reason the tampon industry took off because the pads were nasty. The pads were uncomfortable. The pads was something that the woman didn't want. And, okay, so someone said, look, let's plug it up. If we plug it up, there won't be that much blood coming out. So I have a lot of my patients, especially those with fibroids, who have tampons and pads, okay, because the bleeding was just that horrendous. So the tampons kind of came in as a way to help with the flow, okay, as far as blocking the flow, because the actual sanitary napkins weren't that good because when the blood came out, it sat there 
on that napkin, and I'm, I kind of want to pay attention, now I'm bringing it back home again, <laughs> onto the napkin, the bacteria grew, and the bacteria then causes irritation, okay, inflammation of the lips of the vagina. Okay, I'm happy. You saw what she did the demonstration. What she was showing is that when that fluid comes out, and it's not just blood, there's some urine, there's some sweat, mm -hmm. all of that is down there. Okay, that is now taken away from the body into that pad. That's why when the young lady pressed on it, and that napkin was the skin. That skin was dry. Okay, that fluid, okay, was in that plant polymer. Now, on past that, now since this is the reason I'm supposed to be up here, let me speak about the graphene. But I just wanted to say that to me, even without me talking about this next part, that to me is the reason, if nothing else, why our napkin are fabulous. Now, graphene. Does anybody have a pencil? Everybody's pants and tablets. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. 